right. And hopefully you all can still see my screen. If there's any issues with that, feel free to chat in and let me know. And we are gonna go ahead and get started. So welcome. We're excited to have everybody here. This is the second webinar in our summer series. So we're happy to have you with us today. It's going to be a great webinar. I'm Sierra Pratt. I'm the marketing manager at Star Staffing, moderating today's webinar. And hello to our speaker today, Tiffany, Tiffany Castaño. Welcome, Tiffany. Thank you. Thanks for everyone being here and Sierra and Star Staffing for having me. I'm excited today. Yes, welcome. And we will introduce Tiffany in just a bit. This webinar is being recorded for future viewing and be sure to check out any of our past sessions at starhr.com slash webinars, or you can just look under our resources tab. There's lots of great stuff there. This is the second of three summer sessions. The next session will be August 17th and we'll cover culture and accountability. And today we are excited to learn from Tiffany on a topic that was specifically requested by you all. So it's going to be a great session. And um, first up, we just have a few announcements and a couple of housekeeping items. There is a brief survey at the end of the session. So if you wanna share any feedback or ideas um, that should pop up following the webinar, I'll also send it out in the post email, but um, just a super quick survey that'll pop up. And um, just to note questions, if you wanna ask questions, those are kind of the easiest to field in the Q&A. So if you can access that feature, just make sure you can see it. You can ask questions anonymously or, um, or not. So it's totally up to you, but that's kind of the easiest way to do it. And feel free to put them in as we go and we'll take as many as we can at the end of the session. If you can't um, do the Q&A and you wanna put them in chat, you can do that as well, but we are gonna take them through the Q&A um, to start with. So. And yes, there will be, um, oh, it's not sharing. Thank you for, can you see them now? Are the slides sharing now? <laughs> I see your hello slide. Okay, perfect. I think maybe that wasn't quite showing. So perfect. Um, so moving on, uh, the next edition of HR Jolt is coming. Uh, we are going to be sending that the first part of August. So if you haven't requested the uh, HR magazine that we put out, you can do so. You can get it either digitally or in print. And this session, this uh, particular edition will have industry-focused articles, legal updates. We're going to have a great piece on the people experience. So that is coming soon. So if you're not already getting our magazine, be sure to sign up so that you can be sure to receive your copy. And if you are not signed up for our labor report, you can also sign up for that. We put together all the latest updates and share insights that are important for business decisions, especially when it comes to hiring. It's um, absolutely free and we make it really easy to understand what's going on in the market. So you can be sure to find either of these things at starhr.com under the resources tab. Um, you can always reach out to me. I'm happy to help you uh, get signed up for those as well. Okay, and now I have the pleasure of welcoming our guest speaker today. Tiffany Castaño is the CEO and founder of Sefer LLC, a human resources consulting firm that supports small to mid-sized businesses in building out their infrastructures and a strong employer brand and culture. Tiffany has supported stakeholders and organizations of all sizes and industries throughout her 13 year uh, HR career. Her why is building more psychologically safe organizations and cultures and stronger leadership to support the people and processes within organizations. Tiffany is passionate about creating safe workplaces and communities under DEI principles. She is also the co-author of a children's book, Can a Zebra Change Its Stripes? So I'm gonna be sure to check that one out. It teaches um, children about embracing differences. She enjoys serving her community and believes that together is better. And we will welcome Tiffany. I'll go ahead and stop my share and let you take over. Thanks so much. Thank you. And while she gets those up, yes, we will be uh, offering both the recording and the slides. So typically what we do is we send out an email and it'll, um, it'll link to our landing page that has all the, all the resources. Tiffany's been um, so great to also provide a, a short list of resources that she's going to share. And so those are already prepped for you. So all of that will be coming uh, most likely by tomorrow. So just look for that email and then all those resources will, will be available for you. Nico, sorry, I was like not wanting to be nice. Can you all see that? 
You see the slide deck? Yes. Perfect. All right, well, I'm very excited to be here with you all today. Thank you again, Sierra, and all of you from all over these different parts, whether it's morning or afternoon. And I'm excited to talk about this topic. It's very near and dear to my heart because as Sierra shared, I do help organizations kind of build their infrastructures and effectiveness is very much a part of my world. So even if you're a small team, you can still add value. And just one quick little caveat, we do have some construction going on at our home here. So I apologize if there's any disruptions there. They have promised me to be quiet. Um, I hear a little something in the background, but we'll keep on uh, rolling with it. I'm used to being agile. We're going to talk about that today too. So uh, thank you all for being here. Before uh, we kind of jump right in, I do have a quick poll for you that Sierra is going to help us run. So in order to know where we're going, we have to kind of know where we are now. So this is an anonymous poll, but I'd like to know whether or not you think your HR team is effective kind of current state. All right, the poll is going. Tiffany, do you see the... I saw it, but I minimized it. Okay. <laughs> we'll let everybody, we'll let everybody uh, take a moment here to answer. It looks like we have most of them in, but we'll leave it up for just a few more seconds while we yeah. you see that, but there's kind of some... There's some big trends here, so. Ooh, I like trends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. And we'll go ahead and share the results here. Okay, so we have, thank you, Sierra, for, for doing that. Um, so we have 35% who say yes, and no one said no, so that's a good thing. 65% of you say somewhat. So um, I think probably where we typically land is at about somewhat, um, or sometimes people say no. So I'm pleased to see that there are no no's. Um, and for those of you who said somewhat, that is a good thing because we're gonna talk about a lot of those tools and tips today that I'm really looking forward to diving in with you. As Sierra said, please feel free to put your questions um, in the question Q&A section so that you don't lose track of them and we can talk about them later. So thank you for indulging that. You know, one of the things that we can do, we can all be more effective. So there's always more opportunities for each of us to do that. And I do look at that as an opportunity. I don't see that as a challenge. I see it as an opportunity. So we can jump right in. Thank you all for doing that. So as I said before, we want to know where we are to know where we're going. One of the things that I that I do with my clients is to assess where, what's your current state. This is something that I would encourage you if you're not doing now to make sure that you move towards that direction. Because in order to know where we're going to assess where we are in an ideal state, we really have to know where we've been. And then that some of you said somewhat to the poll. So that means that there's opportunity to kind of make, make some choices and some decisions to determine what the next step will be and what that will look like. And I've always loved to celebrate that as opportunity. So you want to be able to create a learning organization within this, which means that not only for the individual, but for the team, you want to be able to leverage the strengths of the individual and of the team. And so there are lots of different ways that you can do this. Um, people often will have separate uh, organizational development, training departments. That's one way. External learning often gets forgotten about when we talk about creating a learning organization. So we want to be able to kind of feed the needs, especially if we have, I know we have some leaders in this room, um, and we have a lot of diverse organizations, industries represented. So uh, if you're not on that path to allowing people to be developed as a leader, that is part of our role is to develop, it's not just to, you know, give the intern the work or to tell people what to do. Leaders are really, uh, we have a, a huge duty in order to influence. And so a lot of that is creating the learning. We can create individual development plans. And for a leader, that doesn't mean that you do all the work. It means that the employee kind of meets you along the way too. And so your small organizations, we know that teams are lean and that you may not have a lot of uh, different people on your team who can help lead some initiatives, some projects, some efforts. And so the more you allow cross collaboration, you allow a learning organization where people feel safe to make mistakes, the better it's gonna be. 
You may have heard of the book, The Four Stages of Psychological Safety by Timothy R. Clark. If you have not, I highly recommend it, but it talks about the different levels of safe safety. So there's inclusion, there's learner, there's contributor, and there's also challenger. And that means that we're creating an environment that's ripe for learning, where people feel like they're safe to be heard, where ideas are shared. And that's what we have to do as small teams to be effective. We have to make sure that we're communicating effectively effectively, people have to feel like they can take some risks and that they can assess different points along the way on a project or their career development in order to move things forward. And so that cross collaboration also prevents silos. We don't like those, they're not our friends because then all the knowledge stays with one person or a few people. And that's not good for the long-term health um, and scale of the organization. So what you're essentially doing when you're doing that is you're creating a growth playbook. You're, you're ensuring that as you scale, as your team scales, as the organization scales, that you're very deliberately and strategically creating wins for yourself as you grow, because it gets really painful. I'm a small business owner myself. And so documentation, we're going to talk about that in a minute, is very, very key. Making sure that our processes are in place so that we create the growth, so that we're strategically thinking about it. We consider the past what has it been now with COVID, 18 months, something like that. Um, COVID time is weird for me, so I'm trying to navigate through it. But when you look at that whole period of time, it's been very, very uncertain for a lot of reasons. There's business context, things have changed, and we have to be prepared to be agile in order to move along with that. So if we start our growth playbook now, then we can move along and we can see here that there's appreciation always has to be for these, you know, the past context, the historical historical, which is why people sometimes get frustrated when someone new comes to the organization and they haven't appreciated, you know, where the organization maybe has been. And so we have to appreciate that. We want to have that documented, but we want to stay there because status quo is not a run either. It's not going to move us forward. It's not going to move the business forward and we can't stay stuck in, in our old ways. But that's the beauty of, of iterating and figuring out all these processes. We get to learn along the way and we get to do some new things along the way. And right now, if any of your organizations are going through this um, return to work or balancing remote work, that is a very complex situation that, that needs to be navigated. So shout out to all our small HR teams here who are helping and our leaders to uh, be on the forefront of that. We also have to decide measurements. So Many of you may be using KPIs or OKRs or whatever flavor of the day um, that's, you know, and maybe it's tried and true, but you want to be able to measure. We have to be able to measure what we're doing because we need to be able to track things. We need to hold people accountable. We need to hold ourselves accountable and be self-aware. We have to understand the what, but also how and when. So think about in your organizations what things may be cyclical. So that's probably, well, I'm sure it's your payroll. Um, we have things like I-9s that we have to keep you know, in compliance. We have industry and other regulatory items. We have performance reviews and talent assessments. And all of those things may be on a cycle. There are many, many more, but these are just the ones that are top of mind for me today. So think about what those things are. And as you reflect today and you think about how you answered the poll, whether it was the yes or the somewhat, maybe it's no and you just didn't respond to the poll. And that's okay too. But what really I want you to do is to reflect on where do you feel like your team is either hitting a barrier, where are there some limitations, where can you maybe move things forward, and how are you going to do that? Does that mean switching up a cycle and doing things a little bit differently? Does it mean pulling in a different stakeholder, or partnering with another group? Really, all of these things are going to enhance where the organization is going. And so those are some things that um, I would like you to consider. And the beauty of that is it's only, it's only up from here. So definitely want you to consider that. It is going to be an iterative process. So as we think about that, um, let's look at, let's talk about some things that help with processes. So our systems and our processes are key. I said before that as a small business owner, I know this, and it can be painful sometimes as a small team when you just want to, especially if you're a lean team or a startup, and you just want to get things moving, your clients have demands, you have all these projects, you have all these wonderful ideas that you're celebrating and wanting to move forward as a team, 
all good stuff. But we often miss the pause to document. And, and then when you have a new person coming on board, now they're not prepared for success. They may be disengaged. They may not uh, stay with the organization. So retention could become an issue and you have turnover. That is costly. And we're going to talk about, you know, kind of some, some of those types of things later too. But you want to make sure in the beginning that you, as a team, especially as a small team, that you're aligned on goals, that you're aligned on the organization's mission, vision, and values. Now, often we see that people are not always um, maybe on the same page, right? But we tend to work where we're all working towards the same goal, and that should be the goal for us here. So you want to make sure that you all have a good understanding of that. And as leaders, um, even as individual contributors and as human resources, there is great value and opportunity to influence. So maybe you don't have a title in leadership, but you have, and maybe your team is very small, but you have the opportunity to make great changes and to deploy kind of some change management. There's lots of great change management tools out there. I have a lot of project management tools on here. There are things like uh, RACI that tell you um, you can use, and that's, uh, we'll drop that later. There's a resource uh, slide on that. And so you'll have all that available to you once all of these resources um, drop after today. But RACI is essentially, um, you determine, it's a framework if you've ever heard of it, of determining who's gonna be responsible, who's gonna be accountable, who should be consented, and who should be informed. And not everybody's going to play the same role on the team, which is where your processes and your systems are really going to come in and lend you um, a lot of great help. If we don't build, sometimes we have to, you know, build the plane while we fly it. I, hello, I understand that very well. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're documenting that. You have to build the structure. It's why we do certain things when we build a house before um, the end result is done, or we might have some problems and it might just fall down to the ground. So we don't want that to happen. We have to develop our processes, our SOP, our infrastructure. And often what I see when things are maybe not working the way that they should, is that it comes back to a process error. So we also want to be learning lessons. As I said before, change is good for us. We want to take the lessons and take those pauses to determine these documents, when you're talking about standard operating procedures, anything that's to do with your infrastructure, they really should be living documents. They, that doesn't mean that they're, they're going to be dynamic. It doesn't mean that they're going to just stay static and they shouldn't. We all know about the joke about the dusty binders that sit there. It's kind of like your exercise equipment. If you're not going to use it, it's not going to have much value for you, right? Um, we all have budgets as well. So we have to manage to those. Even if you have a tight budget, you can can manage those dollars. Again, as a small business owner, I know that budgets can be part of the barrier, but it doesn't mean that we can't create solid teams, that we can't communicate effectively. It costs us nothing to do that. So that's where I really would you know, like you to consider as we reflect today, maybe some of that um, communication or lack thereof is where you feel like your team could use a boost and why, where it's maybe not as effective. Um, maybe it's tools and resources. So there's a lot of fancy tools out there. I will say I do suffer from shiny object syndrome um, and like to have a lot of tools. I love seeing the next new thing. Part of what I help do is vet software for my clients. So um, on that note, a lot of us have software in our organizations that we're not and that we're not even fully using all of the features and capabilities. So we're wasting time and money and processes because we're not effectively using it. Um, and we talk about our budget dollars, we want to be fiscally responsible too. So those dollars should go as far as they can. And if we've done the work up front to say, what can this new system, this new tool do for me if I automate this to allow me to streamline my processes? If we don't use that, then it does us no good. So some of these tools are um, in method methodology. So we have the agile principles, which is essentially being flexible, being nimble, not being stuck to a certain process. There's things called program and implements and I won't, increments, and I won't get like too far into that because I think we have some manufacturing folks here too. So you're probably familiar with Lean, Kaizen, Agile. Um, if we have any IT folks in the room, even our HR professionals, there's um, a new exciting evolution towards Agile HR. But 
it's really what I want you to think about is it's a mindset. So there are certainly tools and, um, you know, some people still use Excel. We can use Trello, uh, things like Miro, Asana, or Monday. And there's many, many more of them as a person who knows um, and loves vetting uh, different tools. There are definitely a lot of them out there. So I'm not telling you not to buy um, or to purchase any software to help move your team along. Sometimes, especially as a small team, it's worth making that investment to move the organization to move your team, to move a project forward. Um, and that's something you always want to be assessing. Maybe right now, because time is a factor too. It's a very finite resource, but it might just be that right now isn't the time. So don't discount that for later. It could just be that maybe the time isn't right for now. Um, but really what I want uh, you to think about around these project management tools and methodologies is that they too can shift and move. Software technology is always advancing. So there are always new opportunities to explore that and to really get your team around that. The important piece is to feel like as a team, you can be flexible. If you're a small team, you gotta be flexible. You can't just necessarily stick to one thing because things might change. And then you have to be wearing all the hats, right? Especially as HR, I know how that goes. I've been a department of one. Um, and so for you, who, um, who maybe joined joined with us today, who are departments of one, um, I, I understand what that's like, I, I empathize. And so you wanna be able to make the most of the tools that you have, even if you're not doing these Kanban with the sticky notes um, and all of those things um, on the board and the easels, they're great. They help you map out processes, but if even if you don't have it automated, you want to have it somewhere. And as a team, you want to agree what, on what those goals are, where you're going, and who's going to be responsible, accountable, who's to be consented, and um, who's to be informed. Because those roles and clear um, org structure and delineation of roles matter. I see so many times that people have not really allowed themselves the time to really be deliberate about the org structure. And so that's one thing I would recommend to, particularly for lean teams, um, our roles matter. And even when we have to wear seven different hats, knowing who we can pull from and that cross collaboration I mentioned is very, very key. Okay. So we'll dive into um, some of that. These resources I have um, on the resource page too, in terms of the Agile and Kanban as well. Don't forget to put your questions in the Q&A if you have them. I can't uh, wait to hear about them. Um, so as we're looking at our processes, this I pulled um, the source from uh, lean.org and you'll notice that it's cyclical. It's circular because we want to always be iterating on the processes. But before we do that, we have to identify the value. So as a team and even as a small team, you want to make sure, are you working on the right thing? Remember I said, you got to know where you're coming from in order to know where you're going. So as we look to identify value, what do your stakeholders need? Have you had the question? And this is where you want to be able to share information with individuals. You want to be able to ask questions that are going to point you in the right direction of what that person needs and what's gonna serve the business. As HR professionals, it's very important that we know what our stakeholders need. As we work towards partnership, that is gonna be a critical piece. It gives us credit, credibility, authority, allows us to work better um, with individuals. I think we also have um, other leaders in, in the room today too. So it's helpful when we can partner together and when there's not a silo of one versus the other. Now, once we've identified the value, we wanna map the value stream. What is the value and what is gonna create a process flow? What does that workflow look like? And again, it's gonna to have to change because we have to take those pauses in between in order to make sure that we're working on the right things. That right thing could change from one day to the next. As we all know, there are shifting and competing priorities. And so we have to assign those priorities accordingly, whether we're doing something as fancy as a Kanban board or agile um, and then program increments, or whether we're just having a quick pop-up stand-up meeting as a team around Robin, making sure that your agendas reflect what you're trying to work on and that you're always in constant communication with, you, with each other is very critical. Once you get your processes and there's a good flow, 
we also want to establish the poll. At this point, once we're to this point, we should be, our, our stakeholders, our end users should be extracting value from what we're doing. What is the project? We should be assessing along the way with our stakeholders, whether this is working for them as a team um, internally, we should be assessing whether that's working. And sometimes our stakeholders are gonna be internal and sometimes external, right? So we wanna make sure that we're meeting all of those needs. And this is where your change management tools are really gonna come in handy because there is an order of operations as well to how we communicate messages, when we communicate them, who communicates, who's in the room, and the format in which we do that. That all matters. And that's, that's where sometimes I see people um, kind of leaking resources out the door because they haven't done that planning, plan, plan, plan. Strategy always wins, right? So we wanna make sure that we're doing that so that our customers can extract the value. Um, the last one, I don't love how it's worded as a recovering perfectionist myself, but we're always kind of seeking the ideal and utopia, right? So there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with striving for the top effectiveness is how I would, how I would rephrase this. But I say we can't seek full perfection because we're always going to be in this cycle of reframing, reworking, figuring it out without doing too much rework and causing um, waste out the door. So this is um, another tool that is very helpful in that process. Alongside that, we want to talk about our wasted time and efforts. So Oprah's over here, she's giving out meetings. I'm not gonna have the GIF versus GIF <laughs> argument. I'm not sure which one it is. I go back and forth myself um, on different times, but everyone's getting a meeting on this slide. Now, what are we doing when we assign meetings? Do we have that clear agenda that I mentioned before? What's the duration of the meeting? Are we having a 30 minute meeting? Are we having an hour meeting? How deliberate is it that we've planned that? Could this meeting have been an email? We've all seen that meme going around, I'm sure. We uh, This morning, you know, I had a call with a client and we talked about the differences in what was going on with this project that we're working on. I could have sent her a huge email that she would have had to digest that would have wasted her time. Then we would have been going back and forth on emails. Instead, we had a very productive 40 minute meeting and we kind of hammered it all out. We talked about our next steps. Action items are our friends as well. You don't wanna be wasting time and effort. Again, time is a finite resource. You wanna make sure that you're having um, enough time to do things, that you have the right people in the right roles and assigned to the right projects. And in order to do that, you have to be able to understand what's kind of going on in the environment and what is needed. So um, effective communication is a very good tool as well. Sometimes if we've communicated something wrong, I've seen situations of overtime because somebody didn't know that there was a duplicated effort over here. We're now um, not having these sustainable, repeatable processes and we're wasting time and effort because we haven't talked to each other or because we've pulled too few or too many people into the room. The higher up we get in the chain, as we know, the cost goes up, time is money. So we have to make sure that not only do we have the right people in the room, maybe you don't need the SVP to come to this meeting. Maybe you just, they're the person that's consented or informed when we look at the RACI model. Um, but there may be other play players in, the, in, in this uh, process, like your project manager, your HR manager, who need to be a part of these change management efforts and you don't want to leave them out of that either because then that creates work where you're going back to people where you have to start over because we haven't really considered everyone um, who is in uh, the the structure of the meetings and we have to ensure that you know have we heard everybody's ideas on the structures of our meetings have we understood who needs to be in the meeting um, and who we can maybe pull and just tap aside and maybe have a different conversation and there may be times when you can use your one-on-ones effectively for some things and there may be times you may have to schedule another meeting but so many times people go and they just want to schedule the next meeting, um, which isn't always going to be the best for us. So we want to plan, we want to have a clear agenda, and we won't we don't want to be like Oprah and just like giving out meetings because nobody likes that. Meetings are effective. I actually love a good effective meeting, but when we want when we want to have them, we have to have a clear agenda 
and be clear about what our action items are and if there's any prep work beforehand, because many of you may have seen that we waste time too because people aren't coming prepared to meetings or we're multitasking in meetings and then we're really not getting things done either. So consider when uh, you thought about that poll question and as you continue to reflect on it today, where that waste may be coming from in the organization because time is money and we don't wanna be wasting other resources either. Okay, so we have now our friend uh, Doc Brown, I believe that's his name from Back to the Future. So when I said before that uh, you don't have to have all the fancy tools for Agile or any of those things, you can, and that's great. Um, they're great, great resources. I embrace that in my own business, but sticky notes are optional because the important piece is the effectiveness that you're gonna have as a team and learning to work with each other and your stakeholders. So the top two bullet points on this slide are sense and respond and inspect and adapt. Those are pulled from agile principles. Um, sense and respond, remember before that I said, you want to identify the value. So we need to sense the environment environment, what's going on, again, back to COVID and all the uncertainty there, we had to know, um, we really didn't know what was coming at us. We had to figure this out. We had to sense and respond and inspect and adapt and really understand what we were working with to make the best decisions because there were impacts to the business context and to business continuity in many cases and not having a plan, not being strategic, not figuring that out and mapping out a conducive workflow can be problematic. I know that I was sitting in many, many meetings um, around that and I'm sure you all were too because we have to be adaptable to the environment. We can't just um, again, go back to the status quo, that won't serve us well. And so it's always about understanding where we need to pause, how we need to pause. Does that mean that a project gets put on hold and that we shift gears? We have to be able to be agile and, uh, and to be able to do that. Um, start, stop, and continue is another tool that I have used for many years. Some of you may be familiar with that, or um, sometimes it's used in tandem or called a needs assessment. I really enjoy this process, and it's simple enough. Sometimes uh, people refer to them as like a traffic light, or for those of us who say stoplight, um, as red, yellow, green. What are we starting? What are we stopping? And what are we continuing? And this is important because when you look at the needs of your stakeholders, you want to understand um, what's maybe not started or what the organization or your team could use and benefit from in value that you're not doing. You also want to understand what's not working. And um, even if it's, if, if it's not fully not working, what can you enhance upon uh, with your policies, procedures, your infrastructure? Um, and what's working great? What are we celebrating that we wanna continue? All of these things are equally important um, because we have to know where we are at any given point. This is when we're sensing and adapting, uh, we're responding, we're understanding what's going on and we're doing the real inspection, which the inspection piece should always be uh, cyclical. Again, we wanna be uh, tapping into those lessons we're learning. And then everything we do, we should be doing with a people first approach or human centered design because we all come into the workplace as people first. We want to be treated as people, not widgets or robots. And so even at the intersection, I had a conversation um, with a strategic alliance partner the other day around the intersection of humans and technology. And we need each other, we do, this is the direction that we're going. And so we have to be able to embrace the future of technology, but we also want to remember that there are humans behind that. So how can you leverage your team, even in a small team, to be able to help support the processes? Who can you maybe give? Um, delegation it is, is another great way to use resources, but not delegating just to delegate. So who can you give that to that may see that as an opportunity and where you could maybe engage that person and it can lighten up the load of someone else. If you're a leader, you are tasked with doing all the visionary work as well. And you might be a working leader too. Hello, I've, not, I've done that as well. And especially as a small um, department of one in HR. So because of the many hats we wear, we have to be creative with how we can be flexible, particularly as HR professionals and delivering the value. Our value proposition, uh, whether you're in human resources joining us today um, or not, is very key because it's back to identifying that value and who is going to be um, your end user, your end stakeholder. That's very important. 
So those are things to, to kind of consider. And again, it's all a mindset. So um, I liked this, this GIF, I'm saying GIF right now, uh, because it's saying, you know, it's, we're not, we're going to the future, right? So we don't have to necessarily use sticky notes. They absolutely have their time and place. But what I loved about it is that we're talking about really embracing change and being able to have it be a mindset over focusing on the tools themselves. Automation is great. We want to streamline however we can. Maybe it means that we um, are using file storage or, or, you know, sometimes people use instant messenger or chatting. There are so many tools and functions, especially in the remote and hybrid environment that we can use to streamline, to make our work so much more effective, to open up our communication lines. Um, because I hear so often that there's, there's a silo and as HR, we often get put in a bucket over here and people only call us when it's reactive. That is my other tip for you is be proactive as much as possible. I know when it's a small team and there are fires to be put out everywhere, we have to keep the lights on, that it can be very tempting to just push off projects or things that are gonna move the needle forward for us. But we want to resist that temptation to just let it kind of slide because we're not gonna be effective, right? We talked about our growth playbook and we wanna be able to move things forward. So here are some core habits of a successful team. Again, we're going to share out this deck. So uh, this will be available for you later. And I'm not going to go over all of these, but I really want to kind of reiterate again, when we talk about psychological safety in the workplace, which is so, so critical for all teams, particularly for small teams. But sometimes what we see is this uh, placing and shifting of blame and not allowing people to take risks or to make mistakes. And that is a huge disengager. If you already have a small team, you can't afford to be having a retention issue or turnover issue. Um, so we wanna be able to keep our teams in place. We want to be able to, if you're a leader and as a team, you wanna decide like, all right, here's the mission, vision, values. And what have we agreed upon as a team? Whose strengths can I pull from and leverage from to help move this project along? Because we all have, that's the beauty of diversity, equity, inclusion. We all have various strengths that are so critical to the team and we were hired for different reasons. So we wanna be able to leverage those and to be able to use those to the team's advantage so that we can have the most effective team. We have to be adaptable. We have to expect the unexpected. And the businesses that are thriving and that are the teams that are thriving are okay with being nimble and moving and flexing to needs as they shift within the business and they know the business's needs. So you want to leverage these um, and absolutely allow people the ability to be in an environment where they do feel included, where they do feel safe to share. Uh, you want people sharing their ideas because those ideas often come with cost savings. They may have an idea that's going to save the company time or money or reputation, employer brand is a huge thing. It might help with the culture in the organization. So you always want to be mindful of those and rally around each other, lean into, you know, everything that you're deciding to do as a team. You want to be able to support each other. That goes very far, especially in small teams. So these are just um, some of those. There are many more. Um, so I, I would encourage you to reflect on that too, on what makes your team successful. Where is their opportunity? If you answered somewhat, where do you feel like maybe there is more opportunity to come together as a team? Because high performing teams are able to adapt and shift and they're really able to lean on each other to leverage the best strengths and to be effective. Um, if you've heard the term small but mighty, you can be a small team and still be very mighty and effective. I've had the pleasure to work on many of those teams and been able to, as a, even as a department of want to deliver great value. So I'd love to you know, kind of leave you with those thoughts there too. And on that note, um, we really reach our peak and our high performing teams when we embrace all of these things, when we're able to share with each other our successes and not hoard knowledge within the organization. What happens when Susie leaves and she's been there 25 years and we haven't, there's not been, now there's downstream impact because we haven't shared that with the rest of the team. That is a, a very, very, very unfortunate situation that I see happen over and over again. So this is where that pause and really mapping out your workflows is going to, to serve you 
best and working together because we are at our best when we work together. When Sierra did my intro, she said that I believe that together is better and I truly do. We don't reach our peak alone. Even if you're in an individual contributor role, you're in a role that's typically more uh, individual. We all still report to somebody. We all still have stakeholders and end users at the end of the day. So please keep that in mind when you think about not only your individual performance, but the performance of the team and that against the role um, and performance of the organization. And that's how we will scale as teams and as organizations. So I mentioned some resources and those are all on here and those will be emailed out as well. I did not really touch on the theory of constraints. I briefly talked about multitasking. And so you'll find that theory of constraints covers um, some of those things for those of you who have maybe heard of it. It's very interesting. So you might want to just peek into it and see what that can offer your organization to. Um, but it's another mindset um, and a way to make sure that um, you're you know, kind of limiting initiatives and that you're, you're working on the right things, that you're not like multitasking all over the place and having just like this wasted time because you're not really focused. Intentionality is our friend as well. So um, those are the resources. And then um, before I hand it back over, if you'd like to stay in touch, um, I am on a little social media break right now, but you are more than welcome. I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn. Um, I'm typically very active there when I'm not on a break. And um, you can reach me via my email address here as well. And um, if you, I do give also uh, one hour consultations if you want to talk one on one about the effectiveness of your team or um, any other business initiatives that you feel like I can help out with, um, particularly for small teams. Uh, I am more than willing to take uh, those bookings and you can do that on my website. So I have definitely enjoyed spending this time with you all. I hope that you've extracted some value and I would love to turn it back over to Sierra now for um, our Q&A and anything else. I know she has some closing items for us as well. So I'll stop sharing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tiffany. That was great. I loved it. You had me, um, I've never heard that expression before. Build a plane as you fly it. Oh, yes. So I'm going to use that all the time now. Um, so that Please was, do. That was it's not funny. mine. <laughs> I, I know, you, too. you said that and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever heard that before. So um, thank you so much for that. That was great. So we will take questions now. Um, you can go ahead and throw those in the Q&A. If you don't see that and you you know want to put them in chat, we will take them there as well. Um, it's just a little easier in the Q and A um, section, though. So we did have just one at uh, close to the beginning. That um, did you mention a book, perhaps that um, there? Can you yes. share the book and author again? Yes. So it's Timothy R. Clark, and it's the Four Stages of Psychological Safety. And I am, um, I can try to tr drop it in the chat. I'm surprised I don't have it like readily hand handy because I always talk about it. Um, we can also, I can send it over to you, Sierra, too. And we can um, send it as a resource. I would love to do that. It's absolutely fantastic resource. Perfect. Yeah, we can put that in, um, include that on the resource section. So we'll have that over um, at some point this week. So, um, and we do have a few minutes for questions. So if anybody else has questions, um, we can take those. Um, be no. shy. I don't love shy. curious questions, <laughs> powerful questions as I call them. Yeah, don't be shy. We also, if you know, if you've been more than welcome to do them anonymously as well, or if you want to um, throw a little background in there too, then um, that's great. So we'll, we'll open it up for questions. And I do um, just want to note that there is a great, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, but in our upcoming edition of HR Jolt, there is a great article um, by Tracy Sponenberg, which is all about kind of the people experience as well that you touched on. Um, I think this would be a kind of a great follow-up. So be sure that you register for that um, coming up. So yes, I'm very familiar with Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I don't see any questions coming in. So we'll just give it one more minute here. Um, and then we'll um, we will let everybody go. Um, just really quickly too, I think you mentioned at the beginning um, individual development plans. Maybe you can you just share maybe just a couple points on that about what that entails. Sure. Um, thanks for that. So, so we often think of like our performance reviews, and we 
look at, you know, just more of this sometimes very linear way of looking at performance. So usually in a performance improvement plan, um, that's because someone is kind of struggling. Um, and in a performance review, we're, we're kind of rating that, we're assigning, you know, feedback and hopefully doing that during our one-on-ones as well. Um, but also, for, with an individual development plan, really the goal there is to allow that person to come up with where they're trying to go in their career, what that next step looks like for them. But then it's not really incumbent upon the leader. The leader's role is really to help support along the way and to say, who, who can I introduce you to? Um, mentorship is, is one thing that I wanted to mention when we talk about um, these systems and how we can be effective as teens, especially as small teens, to really be able to pull from each other and to have a mentor so that we can say, okay, on this day, I can, you know, if I'm, if I'm Tiffany and I'm the leader, I can help support my employee by syncing them up with a mentor. And that's going to help them. That's going to help me too, so that I can be as effective as I can be, but in their own development, they, hopefully our employees have things that they want to aspire to, and we can help them along the way. So they determine, you know, if I want to learn Excel, because I'm not great at Excel, so I'll pick on myself here. If I want to learn Excel, who are the key stakeholders and players in the organization that I need to, to talk to? Um, what tools and resources do I need either and internally and externally to be able to learn this skill? Is there training? Is there a learning management system? Is there a course that the organization will support me to go take? Um, I will craft that, but then it should be in partnership with my leader as well. And they're very, very effective tools. Some leaders shy away from them because they think they're going to have to do all the work. But really, this is a great tool to give some of that empowerment to the employee um, and to help you get a peek into what uh, their aspirations are, too. And hopefully we're having some fluid conversations along the way, too. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's um, mentorship is a, um, is a great piece. I think that could make another uh, great webinar as well about how to kind of get started with that. So I just made a little yeah. note um, on our end. So <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for your time today. Um, that was such a great session. Um, lots you. of great resources and information. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And thanks to everyone who's joining or watching on replay. Yeah, just as a quick reminder, um, as everybody gets ready to head back to their day, we do have one more session in our summer series. Join us again next month on the 17th to learn about creating a culture of accountability with Debbie Turns. Um, we're looking at expanding our webinars uh, throughout the end of the year as well. So stay tuned on that. We have a couple in the works, but we'd love to hear your feedback. So be sure to take just a second to fill out that survey that will pop up here shortly and let us know what topics you're interested in. Um, it could be a follow-up session to um, one of our others or something new. Um, so watch for those, um, watch for that survey and also look for the invitations or you can head to our website to sign up for the upcoming webinars there. Um, so if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to send them to me. I'd love to link to you to any of the resources that I shared with you earlier, our labor reports, our HR jolt or anything else that um, can be of use to you. So with that, we'll let you get back to your day. Thank you again, Tiffany. And uh, we wish everybody a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone.